All right, so today we're doing 311, and actually, it's out of the green book, Writing Equations and Expressions. All right, so one of the biggest problems with the quiz was people coming up to me saying, what does it mean to define the unknowns? So every time you're doing a word problem, I want to see you defining your unknowns. Um, so, Abe cut a piece of wood into two parts so that one would be 13 inches longer than the other. If the original piece was 45 inches long, how long is each piece now? First thing I want you to do is we're going to make sense of what is this story about. What's happening, Billy? Uh, is this one of the two consecutive? It's not a consecutive. It's just a regular word problem. What's happening in the story? I'm going to read the first part again. I'm going to take it sentence by sentence. Abe cut a piece of wood into two parts so that one would be 13 inches longer than the other. Okay, Ben? So it would be the, it would be under the end. I don't want that. I want to know what's happening in the story. Yeah. So there's two pieces of wood. One is 13 inches longer. That's not what he started with, though. Um, Aiden? Did he cut it into half? No. He has this big piece of wood, and he breaks it, and you've got now two pieces. Okay? So, first thing you need to do is to identify your unknown. What do they give you less information on? I always look for that. What do they give us less information on, Brett? How long the other part of wood is? A little bit clearer. I've got these two pieces. What do they give us less information on? This piece or this piece? Ileana? The shorter piece of wood. The shorter piece of wood. So we're going to just say the one they give us less information on, and you need to be writing. The one they give us less information on, this goes in your journal. Start at the top of the page. We're going to start with... Um, the first thing we're going to call is X. Whoops. First thing we're going to name is X. And because that is less information, we're going to call that the shorter piece. The shorter wood. Or short wood. Okay? Now, they give us more information on the longer one. So that one I'm going to end up translating. Longwood. Okay. Now it says one wood is 13 inches longer than other. The other wood is the short wood. One is 13 inches longer than the other. Yes. Perfect. And what because it says than, we put the 13 next to it. Now we look at our piece of wood that's been broken. What kind of equation can you make out of that? That's the next step. Is it Joshua? Yes. X plus X plus 13 Perfect. So the next step we're going to do is write X plus X plus 13 is equal to 45. Now, really what we're doing here, right here, I've defined my unknown. Okay. Another thing you might want to do is write it out in words. What's the story saying? It's saying the short piece plus the long piece is equal to the total. But if you can get here, your goal every time with a word problem is to write an equation. I want to see the equation. I want to see the definition. I want to see the equation. And now you solve it. This part's easy. Everybody can do this part. The harder part is really translating. What would this simplify to, Ellie? Uh, okay, Liam, next. Um, then you subtract 13 from both sides. Good. 2x equals uh, 32. 32. Next, Dean, Frank. You divide two by on both sides. Good. And x is equal 
to 16. Now here's the most important part. Here's the most important part. If you just write x equals 16, no credit. Because you didn't make sense of you didn't make sense of the answer. What do I do with it in the end, Griffin? You have to plug in 16 to the equation at the beginning. Okay, or to the definitions. So the shorter wood is? 16. And the longer wood is? Good. And it's in inches, and I know Sophia will get you on that. So make sure you use your... So... Defining your unknown, write the equation, solve it, make sense of it. Any common core is going to want you to do that. What's the problem? All right, can we move on? Yep, Mark, you good? Yeah. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay, the length of a rectangle is five less than three times its width. If the perimeter is 30 feet, find its dimensions. What are they giving us less information on that we have to find? Jay. Okay, which one in particular? Those are the two things we have to find. The length they give us. Less info? Now look. Look what the, they're saying here. Oh, shoot. I just got a text from Audrey. Okay, length is five less than three times width. What do they give me less information on? Length is five less than three times its width. Okay, they give us a whole explanation of the length. So the one that has less information, we're going to call that x, and that's what I'm going to name my, what? What am I calling x? Width. Okay, now I've got my length. And they've given it to us. Length, what does is mean? Okay, five less than three times width. Um, how is that going to look? Liam? Uh, maybe 3x minus 5. Perfect. 3x minus 5. Okay. There's one more thing in here, and it gives us a, a more information than we actually realize. Sophia? The perimeter is 30 feet. So I'm going to write perimeter is equal to 30 now, that word tells me more. What else does that word tell me, Aiden? Multiply the width by two and the length by two. Close, but it tells me there's a formula. And I should be able to utilize that formula. There is a formula. What is that formula? L Equals P. P. So as soon as I say the word perimeter, i got to use that formula. P equals 2 L's plus 2 widths. Now I can start substituting. Mark, what am I going to sub in? You're going to sub in for 2 L. You're going to do 3X minus 5 times 2. Okay, so how about from left to right? What do I sub for the P? Oh, um, for P, it was in 30. 30 equals 2 times what? And we say 2 times the quantity, 3x minus 5, when we have those parentheses, plus 2x. Two, two x. Next step. Uh, Brett. We're going to distribute. 30 equals 6x minus 10. Ani? 30 equals... Keep going, Ani. Um, 30 equals 8x minus 10. Good. Next, Colin. Then you're going to um, uh, add 10 to each side. Okay. And we get 40 equals 8x. I'm dividing by 8. And x is equal to 5. 
Now, I'm not done. What do I have to do, Grace? To our unknown, to our variables. Our, our, we have to, to find the value of our variables or of our unknowns. So what is the width, Grace? Uh, 3x minus 5. No. Oh. The width is not 3x. Five. The width is 5. And what is the length, Billy Fisher? 10. It's going to be 10 because I do 3 times 5 is 15 minus 5 is 10. And so my dimensions are 5 feet for the width and 10 feet. Questions? All right. We're going to move on. I draw the picture quite often. Because sometimes it just has me slowing down in my reading and I just draw a piece at a time. Because remember, these are the easiest kind of word problems. So we want to get these strategies down now so that when we get to uniform motion, they're easy. When we get to vertical motion, it's easy. When we're doing this with quadratics, we want a system. Um, we've talked about consecutive integers. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how to name them. But let's do one on here so we get it recorded. OK. When we're talking about consecutive integers, OK, if this is my number line, if it's consecutive, and I call this x, what would the next consecutive, let's say this is 2. We don't know what it is. What would the next one be called? X plus 1, if it's unknown. And the next one? X plus 2. Good. All right. If they're asking us for odd consecutive integers, if I call my first odd number X, what would that next one become, Ellie? X plus 2. X plus 2. And the next one? X plus 4. So, so even though it's odd, we're jumping by twos on the number line. And the same thing goes how we name them for even integers. So actually, let's switch to one of these. Let's switch to one more complicated. You want to do this one, or you want to switch to one more complicated? OK, because I think we've mastered these. So I guess I won't. Um, let's go to this one. Okay, four consecutive. Now look at this. Notice the direction that the numbers are moving in for the, this one that's all in, with odd numbers. They are getting bigger. Remember, negative 13 is the smallest. Negative 11 is bigger. Okay? All right, the next one. The smallest of three consecutive even integers. Well, they said the words consecutive even integers is 18 less than twice the largest what are we calling our first even integer um, Lilith X so we're gonna say the first even uh, even integer is X what is the second even integer Liam Good. And our third? Dean? X plus 4. X plus 4. Now, when it says the smallest of the three consecutive integers, which one is that? X. Sophia? X. X is my smallest. Is. What do I write for is, Shana? Equals. Equals. Now, look what I have here. More straight translating. 18 less than twice largest. This is all really one. 18 less than twice largest. Sophia? So it would be two um, open parentheses, x plus 4, and then minus 18. Minus, close parentheses, minus 18. Now, 
We say that, everybody say this after me, two, two. times the quantity, times the quantity. Of, x of x plus four. Okay? So you're, it's, it's a lot to say, open parentheses, close parentheses. Okay, now we can solve it. We distribute in. Combine our like terms. <coughs> Minus 10. Subtract 2x. I'm left with negative x equals negative 10. Multiply everything by negative 1. And we get x equals, oops, what did I do there? I meant to write negative 10. Multiply everything by negative 1, and we get x equals 10. So, Ellie, what are my answers here? And? Perfect. Okay, questions? So it may involve some translating when you're doing that tonight. Okay, questions? Okay, I think that's it for my PowerPoint. Now I'm going to go to some book problems. I'll try and work on some. So in this case, the lengths of the sides of a triangle are consecutive even integers. So what is one side going to be called? What's the smallest side? Um, Josh? Okay, Centinia, the, uh, the, Sophia, the next side? X plus two. And the third side? And what's the perimeter? How do you find the perimeter of a triangle? Yes? Um, yeah, just adding. There's no special formula. It's side one plus side two plus side three. So we're just adding them all up. And they're just adding them to, to figures. Okay. Okay, now I'm going here. All right, so when you look at the book tonight, um, the first thing they're going to ask you to do is to write an expression. A CD, oh, a CD, you guys, did I say all tonight? Yes, no. okay, good. A CD costs... 350 more than a tape. Sorry, that's not one word. But you know that. You know that's not a word. I better do that. I don't need to put that online. Write an expression for the total cost. They want an expression for total cost. Okay, so what do we know about expressions? Arun? What? It doesn't equal anything. It doesn't equal anything. Um, so there should be no equivalent, no equal sign. So what do they give us less information on? Less information, Liam. There's two objects up there. Okay, I've got a CD and I have a tape. What do they give us less information on? <coughs> the CD or the tape? The tape. the tape. So since there's less information on that, that's what I'm starting with my basic unit. Good morning, teachers and students. Teachers, the pictures are taking longer than we thought. Please accept students without Marking them tardy to your classroom due to pictures. Thank you. Okay. Now, if I've done the tape and I know it's less, what they're giving me, Liam, is the translation. CD is 350 more than tape. So how would I translate that? Maybe uh, T plus 350. Perfect. 
t plus 350. Now, if I'm looking for an expression, there can't be an equal sign in there. What's it going to look like for the total cost of both? Yes. which is the cost of a CD, keep going, plus, plus the tape is T. Okay? So basically that's your expression. Now, you can combine your like terms. What do we end up with, Tara V? Either of these are acceptable. You guys good with that? So the first half of the homework is going to be on writing expressions. And remember, it sounds confusing, but go back to the one and say, what do they give me less information? Call that your X, or whatever the name of it is called. In this case, we called it T for tape. So what this means is for the CD, a tape plus 350 is what a CD costs. All right, let's move on to another one that's even more complicated. Let's do the sum I suggest you write this out like me of an odd if I had a document camera, which I did, but it broke we could be taking pictures and it would be up there. Odd integer three-fourths of the next odd integer and two times <coughs> the following odd integer. Again, all they want is an expression. What do we call the first odd integer? Yes. Okay, first is x, the second, just in general, of consecutive odd integers. X plus 2. X plus 2. The third. X plus 4. Okay. Now, we're going to translate it. The sum of an odd integer, what do I put for that? Just the x, right? It says sum, so what am I doing, Liam? You're adding. We're adding. Three-fourths the next odd integer. How am I writing that? I want to hear from somebody. Nico. How do I say it? Three-fourths. Times the quantity of x plus 2. Keep going. How about Billy? Two times the following odd integer. We've used the first one. We use the second one. The following odd <coughs> integer is what? X plus 4. Yeah. But I have to do plus because it's the sum of these, right? Okay. Plus what? Two times the quantity of x plus 4. There it is. You've translated. Now you can simplify x plus 3 fourths, but you can stay here too. Because that, by rights, is an expression. 3 fourths x plus... Three, three halves, right, plus 2x plus 8. So this is 3 and 3 fourths, 3 and 3 fourths. 15 fourths x plus 8, and 3 over 2 is 1 and a half, so that makes... Uh, Let's see, 8 over 1, 8 plus, um, what is it in, in improper? 
nine. It's not, it's not, um, huh? It's 9.5. So 18 over, oh my gosh, okay, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this. Plus 1.5, 9, nine and 5 tenths. So 9 and 5 tenths. Uh, 9 and 1 half, so it's 18, 19 over 2. Sorry. Sorry about that. 19 over 2. Right? Did I get that right? All right. So any of these would be okay. Do you understand about the idea of just writing the expression? Then they're going to move you into starting to solve problems. They'll give you some consecutive odd integer problems. You just have to solve those. Um, there's a perimeter problem. Let's try this one, number 23. One angle of a triangle, one angle of a triangle is four times larger than another. The third angle is equal to the sum of the other two angles. So let's first talk about this. Let's make a story out of this. I've got a triangle, right? And we've got one angle is four times as large as another. There's three angles. The third angle, the third angle is equal to the sum of the other two. So one angle is four times as large as the other. How am I going to write one of those angles? One angle of a triangle is four times as large as the other. Dean? 4X. Perfect. I'm going to call it 4x. I don't know which one it is. I'm just naming it. Then they give me more information. They say the third angle is equal to the sum of the other two angles. This angle, the third, is equal to the sum of this angle plus this angle. What do they give us the least information on? Angle on the left. Right, so what are we going to call it? Okay, and, but what, it, what, what do we call it if we don't know anything about it? X. That'll be our x, the one with less information. So we've got three angles, the first angle, the second, and the third. They, right away, they give us the first is four times, four X. I should just do first angle. How's that? Second angle, third angle. All right, the second angle they gave us nothing on, but the third one is the sum of the other two angles. So what's it going to look like? Griffin? Uh, just, is it x plus 4x? Yep. And what are we calling that second angle? They, they gave us very little, just x. So now, what am I doing? It says, one angle is four times lar as large as another. The third angle is equal to the sum of the other two. What is the measure of the smallest angle? Now, there should be something that you're thinking about. This you can create an equation. What would I set it equal to? So in reality, I'm saying angle 1, this is the symbol for angle. Angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals what? Um, Soto. 180. Why? Because uh, the sum of the angles of the triangles are the same. Yes. And now I'm adding 4x plus x plus x plus 4 equals 180. Questions? And now they want us to find what are the measure what is the measure of the smallest angle? Josh. Um, you forgot to put an x after the x plus 4. The second 
There we go. Okay, so now we have 8x, 9x, 10x equals 180, dividing by 10, and we get x is equal to? So in this case, all they want is the smallest. Hold on. To get the bigger one, though, we just multiply by 4 or finish it off. Okay. Everybody understands homework tonight is in the green book. Michelle.